What is up, people? Welcome back. We've talked about the short run, so you already know it's time to get into the long run. So let's do it, and go ahead and smash that like button to get us going. All right, all right, let's jump right in. Famed economist and guy who's been dead for about 75 years, John Maynard Keynes, once famously said, in the long run, we're all dead. And I don't know about you, but that seems like a warm and fuzzy place to begin things. Okay, so in addition to being when we're all dead, what else can we say about the long run? In macro, the long run is when all prices and wages are fully flexible, as opposed to the short run, in which we take input prices and wages as fixed. Let's take a look at the LRAS curve, and you'll notice that this one is vertically sloping, unlike the upward sloping SRAS curve. In the short run, sellers like the higher price level and respond by hiring additional workers and increasing their output. But in the long run, those same sellers act differently. As the price level changes, it has no effect on output. This indicates that in the long run, there is no longer a trade-off between inflation and unemployment like there is in the short run. So if you remember from the last video, we said that when the price level rises, Bob hires Zeke so that he can increase his production of burgers. He was able to do this in the short run because wages were fixed, so he could afford to do so. In the long run though, the input prices and wages also rise when the price level rises, so there's no longer an incentive for the firm to hire additional workers and to increase output when those input prices and wages are fully flexible. The LRAS curve basically corresponds to our old friend from Unit 1, the Production Possibilities Curve. Now, I'm sure you remember that the PPC represents the maximum sustainable capacity of output for an economy, and that's what the LRAS curve represents as well. That phrase, maximal sustainable capacity, or potential output, refers to the total output that will be produced if all resources are fully employed. And no doubt that phrase, fully employed, reminds you of full employment level of output that we learned about in Unit 2. And guess what? The LRAS curve represents an economy's potential output, aka the full employment level of output. So on the axis, we can label this as YP for potential output, or YF for full employment output. Either way is fine, just pay attention to how you're told to label it on an FRQ, but it means basically the same thing. And I'm sure you want to know what shifts the LRAS, and don't worry, I have the answers for you, but I also want to point out that you really aren't going to have to draw this for the AP test, so that's good. That's good. One less thing. Basically the same things that cause the PPC to shift outward will cause the LRAS curve to shift to the right. And just like how an outward shift of the PPC represents economic growth, a rightward shift of the LRAS curve also represents economic growth. And since I did such a great job explaining what shifts the PPC in video 1.2, I'm going to let me explain that again. Economic growth is the result of an increase in our factors of production. So if land, labor, capital increases, the possibilities of what can be produced in our economy will also increase. This means more natural resources, more machinery, better tools, better technology, a better educated workforce will all cause our PPC to shift outward to the right, meaning that those combinations that aren't currently possible can become possible in the future. Thanks, Lemoney. Great job. And nice shirt. All right, so that's the last of our three curves for our ADAS model. In the next video, you already know it, we're going to see what magic happens when all three curves get together. So until next time, this has been a Lemoney production. Thanks again for watching. Please hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the bell for notifications. And make sure to check out the description to get answers to these practice questions as well as the notes for this video and great resources like AP Macro in 250 words. And I will see you in the next video.